Chapter 1, Opening Statements. We're back, guys! My goal of this series is to cover a season, like, each month, so I'm going to speed up the uploads this year to, like, kick off the end of 2023 and welcome 2024. It's gonna get wild this time. Today, we're covering four arcs and a special episode. Darks are Troublesome Engines, Henry the Green Engine, Toby the Tram Engine, and Gordon the Big Engine. Thomas's Christmas Party is a special. Let's get started. Topic, Troublesome Engines arc. This arc is probably my favorite overall arc. This is where it gets goofy. So, Chapter 2, Episode 15, Tenders, tenders and Turntables. These guys, I thought they hated Thomas, but now they want him back to shut their coaches and are huge fans of the progressive era. It's like, you won't understand your loss until they're truly gone. But it's even goofier when we realize that Thomas is, uses turntables in the later season. And this is where they introduce turntables. And Gordon explains why he's that guy to Thomas and he shouldn't be doing this job. And this was back when turntables were a half menace, and now it got so bad that Gordon's out here being bullied by kids when shunting. But then Gordon just pops out of nowhere to watch James like have the goofy moment where he fails to the turntables. But real shoot, why would the fat controller install a turntable that clearly doesn't like isn't adequate for his main engines though? But then they have an indignation meeting and Gordon proposes they do a war crime. I like it guys. Things are really heating up. Chapter 2, Episode 16, Trouble in the Shed. They really went on strike, I told you, progressive era MFs. But the fat controller proposes the death penalty. Sir Tom Hatt brings in Edward to handle the shunting. And they get really mad that Edward failed their strike. But yeah, Percy time, let's go. And Percy's like pretty cheeky like Thomas. It's mentioned in a later episode, and he uses wind breathing and scares Henry. Bro got the karma dealt to him. But Thomas helps run the line, and comes back. And Percy really got Annie and Claire, bro, bro. This episode shows the messed up life of trains. You gotta overwork yourself to survive. Die or gradually die with style. Chapter 3, Episode 17. Percy runs away. Sir Tom Hatt really locked everyone in his basement, like three big engines, but he let the rest out to play in his backyard. And only Thomas can be cheeky, Percy. So Percy's on break, but he forgets to whistle, and then that leads to Gordon almost crashing into him. Percy uses the Joe Star secret technique in this episode and straight up leaves. Like, he runs backwards, like, damn. And somehow Percy is moving without his driver, and he crashes into, like, some mud or something, some dirt, and then Gordon comes to help Percy, and who still claims to be cheeky. Gordon's like, nah, bro, you chill. It's all the episode because it's Percy, and everyone likes Percy. Topic. Henry the Green Engine arc. Ooh, let's get it. Chapter 3, episode 18. Cole. POV. James is an ableist and hates Henry. Even the Fat Controller wants to deport Henry. Bro, the Fat Controller even suited up and got inside Henry. There's no way. And, like, at, at the next stop, Edward's just chilling in the background watching this all go down. Turns out Henry's firebox is smaller and bro needs Welsh coal. It's like someone having a smaller or larger heart leads to a bunch of health problems. I love the connections between trains and their conductors. Like, they were, like, encouraging Henry the entire time. It was so cute. Bro uses wind breathing at the Fat Controller after he gets to Welsh coal, but it's actually a good thing this time. Then I hear the badass line where his conductor or fireman inside says, No, I don't need to push Henry. I just need to hold him back. Bro's so chill, he even disses Thomas for a second. Thomas is cool with the, it, though, and it ends well. It makes me happy since I'm a Henry fan. Chapter 4, Episode 19, The Flying Kipper. Okay, this is a pretty iconic episode of Thomas and Friends lore. Everyone who's involved with Thomas and Friends has heard of this episode at some point. Henry has to wake up early to bring the Flying Kipper and is eager to take over Gordon's Express one day. We get to see the docks for the first time. Insert Tug's joke here. I know the time period so match. Don't attack me for it. So Henry's pulling the Kipper by to deal with a faulty signal, which is a certified Henry hater. Even the guards are like, nah, bro, we be chillin', we don't care. Henry crashes. Bro, dude, bro takes a huge L every time he takes a huge dub. He can't hold shoot for a long period of time. The Fat Controller has Henry sent away way to be redone, which makes sense if you know the lore. Insert unlucky tug video here. Henry returns and everyone likes that. Overall solid episode for obvious reasons. Chapter 4, Episode 20, Whistles and Sneezes. So this episode is four minutes like all the episodes have been before, but there's a twist. We have two stories to tell. Gorn's story is that he's in Tile Brad again. This is Henry for having a loud whistle, but Percy disagrees. And we finally have a certified Edward Henry moment, which brings me great joy. But then Gordon speeds through the station with a faulty whistle, so everyone trolls him for it. Now for the Henry story. He's pulling some coaches under a bridge, but then the windows on the coaches are shattered. Some boys are dropping rocks in the trains. It's a contrast to the last episode because they say kids are late to school because they wait to see Henry, but it's the other way around this time. The passengers are mad, but the conductor has a plan for Henry to sneeze. Bro's full of ash and uses his wind breathing on the kids. Bro's the avatar. Tell the story overall with enough W's and L's to go around. 
Topic, Toby and the Tram Engine Arc. Chapter 5, Episode 21, Toby and the Stout Gentleman. I even have the Toby song DVD and his theme slaps. Like, bro, I heard it now. It's like, yup, we in it now. We also get the Lori's name drop before they even appear. Like, there's some foreshadowing right there. The fat controller's on holiday with his grandkids, and Toby uses wind breathing at the kids because he's offended because the girl called him out for being not electric. Toby's mad face, though. Toby recreates the Thomas scene, but he has one day left. But the fat controller saves him. Funny Toby episode as well as a sad one, honestly. Like, bro, they were really going to send him to the basement forever. Chapter 5, Episode 22, Thomas in Trouble. So this episode explains why Toby is needed. Toby... I mean, Tom, Thomas was a huge fan of the police until now. They have a new constable, and basically this one's, like, the nerd. He's, like, enforcing all the rules now. And he makes a dumb cow joke, and now the fat controller either needs to install stuff on Thomas to, like, make him perfect for the laws or get a new engine. Thomas complains about the constable because he doesn't want to get changed because he thinks he'll look bad. And this gives the fat controller an idea. Toby comes to Henrietta and manages the trucks well. He even trolls a cop on Thomas's behalf. Woo episode. Chapter 6, Episode 23, Dirty Objects James is a perfect foil to Toby. A train who cares about his image versus a train who is content with life as it is. James says he is splendid, but Thomas told Toby about the bootleg situation, so he gets bullied for it. It isn't confirmed who told Toby, I just like to think it was Thomas trying to get a lick in. Hearing the t James theme while he pulls trucks brings me great joy. He has a pull to each station, but he loses all his previous character development and crashes to into some tar trucks. Percy and Toby arrive to bully James. I love how on the show they have characters say the same line from earlier, like karma. They just do it differently and it, it hits them back. Same like whistles and sneezes. There is a name for it rhetorically by Forgore. The fat controller even trolls James and Toby and Henry yet again new coat of paint. Toby really had the last lack, laugh in his own arc. That fits him so much if you know the lore. Topic, Gordon the Big Engine. Chapter 6, Episode 24, Off the Rails. Finally, we get a Gordon arc! Time for me to go into full fangirl mode. Henry calls Gordon a fat face while Gordon's trying to sleep. Gordon's the type of guy to claim he's never done X-Sing, but then X-Sing happens. Percy pops out and then Gordon says a goofy line. I thought Gordon liked pulling trucks every once in a while. He has a pull for some famous dude, but like, it doesn't even happen. Edward literally has to drag him out of bed. And then Gordon crashes into a ditch because he's so stubborn. Even his controller called him out for being a dumbass, and even the fat controller locks him in his basement. Even some boys come over and bully Gordon. They even sing the first parody song in the show, mocking him. We all know Troublesome Truck has the best parody song, though. Like, I feel so bad. Bro in the books is so stacked, but here he gets the first parody song, none of him. And nah, bro, and even Edward and James pull him out later. I have some problems, okay? I sense the fraud alert with this one. The fraud alert is strong within this one. Chapter 7, Episode 25, Down the Mine. Gorn really got caught in 4K with smelly trucks. Gorn tries to counter Thomas, but he pulls out the ditch war card, which is a valid point by Thomas. Why do they like Gorn? Imagine if Thomas passes the danger sign at the mine. Wait, stop. He actually did. Thomas abandons his driver like the dumbass he is. Even the fat controller roasts him. Even Gorn gets in a lick and attempts wind breathing. This is Gorn's best moment in the series so far. Like, they help each other. He says he's in disgrace. Like, it's so wholesome, bro. That's a so wholesome ending that shocked me. And it slayed me. Topic, holiday special. Chapter 7, episode 26. Thomas's Christmas party. Humans hate... Overtime while trains love it. Critique of society moment. Back when the humans were relevant, the whole team pulls up while Thomas recaps a goofy story to support his plan for a party. The drivers, the fat controller, and the trains are all into this, but they need to go to the house to pick her up, and it's like snowing in. So Thomas really suits up for this despite his hatred of snowplows. Even brought Terrence in here like it's an Infinity War. And when they revive arrive back at the shed, it's a surprise party. E everyone got hats on. No way, bro. There's even a song at the end. I wrote this script before Christmas, so it's a certified dub. Chapter 8, Conclusion Afterward So, I have finally finished the first season of Tom's and Friends. Every month I'll be watching a season to expect the series on YouTube to be done like two years from now. But before I leave, I'll lay down my thoughts on the current Steam Team, my personal favorite episode. So I'm just going to analyze everything, like analyze everything like so hard. So let's get into it. Number 1, Thomas. So we all know at this point I do not care for Thomas. I think Thomas in the breakdown train is very convenient and literally could have happened to anyone. But I do admit, I like that Tom's... T tank engine arc again very much. In the first episode, Thomas and the guard are very foolish and in line with Thomas's behavior, but it's so absurd. His guard really ran all the way to catch up with him. Next, we have the Thomas Ghost Fishing episode, which I will get to later. Lastly, two episodes of Thomas interact with a tractor named Terrence and a bus named Birdie. It was genius to have Thomas interact with these non-trains. Only Thomas could make this so funny and interesting. Bro really bullies Terrence just to be saved by him later and has a licensed race with Birdie. Number 2, Edward. 
I like Edward. Despite his role in Season 1, despite the fact that he didn't get an arc, I really like him still. Bro starts as a punching bag with the group, but proves that he still has as shown as he helps Gordon up the, his hill in Edward and Gordon. Like, Bro does not complain. He gets the job done, regardless of how bad it makes him look. He even pushes the coaches with Henry and and Edward, Gordon, and Henry. Also in the Troublesome Engines arc, he basically became the new Gordon of the line while Gordon was on strike. He is so cool. I want so much more from him. Number three, Henry. Okay, the next two parts are is where I do the long rant. So, uh, strap in for this. So, I'm gonna be honest. Henry is my favorite character of season one. He has the most character development in the show. Mans has a roller coaster of ups and downs. Rose starts in the sad story of Henry as an idiot who only cares about himself, but is able to break out of that mold to help after Gordon breaks down and Edward, Gordon, and Henry. But he has a small firebox which causes him to be shafted throughout the series until the Cole episode. But he can't shoot for long because the next episode after is a flying kipper episode. Lastly, all culminates in whistles and sneezes where he uses his wind breathing from earlier to finally take a dub. Moving on. Four. Gordon. This is going to hurt. A lot. Mainly for me because I'm a staunch Gordon fangirl, but I have to say it. In season 1, Gordon is a fraud. Capital F, fraud. Bro only has two victories in season 1. The clap back to Thomas and Thomas and Gordon and down the mine where he pulls Thomas out the collapse part of the mine. And even then he got roasted at the start. But And apart from that, it's literally nothing else. Gordon's character is only used to make everyone else better. The average Gordon episode in season 1 goes like this. There are three scenarios. I'll go down the line. Scenario 1. Gordon, I'm express engine, so I'm that guy and I can do whatever I want. You aren't a big express like engine like me, Thomas, so you can't cure cancer. Literally a minute later, Thomas cures cancer. Gordon, shock face. Scenario two, Gordon, I'm an express engine, so I'm that guy and I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to the moon, Thomas, and you can't stop me. Literally a minute later, Gordon doesn't go to the moon for some arbitrary reason. The whole group chat bullies him. Scenario three, Gordon, I'm a... Express engine, so I'm that guy and I can do whatever I want. I refuse to fulfill a, re a perfectly reasonable request. One minute later, Gordon is now in the gulag because he did not make that perfectly reasonable request reality. In most scenarios, some other train has to do it for him. Even Bro shows off, he can't catch a break. And Edward Gordon, Henry Gordon shows up off with the fat controller inside and bursts his safety valve, conveniently, by Henry's tunnel, which causes the fat controller to let Henry out of his basement. In the fat controller, Rose Gordon says he's big. Engines are faulty. Lastly, in whistles and sneezes, Gordon's whistle randomly goes haywire. In conclusion, I'm disappointed in Gordon. He has, he's on fraud watch. Somehow, Henry has a better KD ratio than him. How is that even possible? Alright, lightning round. James and Percy. So, James, number five. Honestly, apart from his debut arc, Bro doesn't really do much, but I do like James. I've always had a soft spot for him. I also find it funny when he's used as a joke, like with Toby, and when he stands up to Gordon, as shown when he pulls the express. Also for Percy, he doesn't get a lot of screen time in season 1, but I still like him. He's wholesome to everyone, even Gordon respects him, as shown in Percy Runs Away. Hopefully he gets an arc next season. Okay, now number 7, Toby. I have a bit of a confession to make. Before I'm watching this, I wasn't really a Toby fan, man. I knew he was pretty OP in the books, but apart from that, I didn't really care. But you know what got me? The Toby and the Stout Gentleman episode. His reaction to being called electric by Bridget Hat slayed me. I did not expect to see Bro so heated. He even pulled out the wind breathing on the kids, and even got one of them scared. Lastly, it shows how even the 80s, well, 40s, for kind of like time period when it was made, electric versus steam discrepancy was like a thing. So that convinced me to keep watching. Also, his steam slaps, and he delivers. Bro Mash roasts James in dirty objects, and has a compelling backstory to boot. Like, boy was almost on the edge of, like, dying, bro. He was going to be sent to the backyard without coming out. And he even trolls the police in his debut arc. Like, bro even rings the bells. He really does not care for the police. I know there wasn't a, po a ton of Toby apart from his debut arc, but I expect some big things from moving forward. Number 8, Sir Topham Hat. Yes, Topham Hat is getting an analysis. You cannot tell me no. This is what's happening, and you can't change it. Sir Tom has role in season 1 is completely solid. I have no complaints. His introduction to the sad story of Henry's genius. It established that Sir Tom Hatt is the boss of Sodor and won't take crap from anyone. As shown as his bricking up on Henry. He is shown to also be able to adapt to maintain the railroad. As shown as the troublesome engines are. Because he was able to get Edward and Thomas to pick up the slack when Gordon, Henry, and James were on strike. He was also able to hire Percy to help with the shunting. Since that was the main source of the original problem. You can find other examples of Sir Tom Hatt being goaded in the James Red Engine arc. Where he lost a... Locks up James in his basement for messing up, and then Toby the tram engine arc, where he gets Toby to help counter the constable. You could also source every time Gordon goofs up, but we'd be all, all day if you did. Actually, before I get to my personal favorite episode and why, I just want to compliment the world building. The conductors and engineers play a crucial role in tending to the engine. 
There's a constable that annoys to- Thomas and Toby the tram engine arc. Him and the Fat Controller does a bunch. Like, he even gets in Henry when he's sick and, like, tries to manipulate him. And also, the world is built with the machines themselves that's shown with the turntables. That's what we go-, go beyond trains. Introduction of Terrence and Bertie. Impressive. Also, I want to talk about how, like, Henry's, like, conductor is always so nice to him whenever Henry's trying to do something. He's like, you can do this, Henry. I'm like, my little heart. <laughs> Okay, now my personal favorite episode and why. My personal favorite episode is Series 1, Episode 12, Thomas Goes Fishing. So you may be asking, wait, you hate Thomas. Why is your favorite episode Thomas 1? Let me explain fewer. I will elaborate. Let us mind meld. I like Thomas because when, well, not because, but when, he is put in absurd situations, and this is easily the most absurd situation I've ever seen a train in. Like, if you did this with a human, people would think you're insane, but it's okay because none of us are trains. He literally has live fish in him, which causes him to have a heart attack. The fat controller arrives and has the gall to bring fishing rods to get the fish out of Thomas. And that isn't the worst it can get. He has the fish cooked in front of Thomas while he is suffering. Like, bro, imagine if you have, like, a kidney stone inside you, and the doctor pulls it out of you and cooks it and eats it in front of you while you're still on the table. Knocked out. Like, bro. He has that cook, man. And yeah, bonus point for Thomas for suffering through all of this. Out of all the episodes I've watched, this episode saved my head rent free the most. It is so absurd and I love it for that. Afterwards. Sorry for this conclusion being hella long. I didn't expect this to be so heated at time. I'll probably try and upload my entire season 1 analysis in full, so stay tuned for that. Tune for that. See ya.